I want blood wine. I have a wife and she doesn't know. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. But. Oh. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. we just got the secret right here. You guys are getting ready for your starting your Olympic trial. It's like a four year sprint. From the famous Acme Theater in Hollywood, it's the Gregory Mantel Show. You've seen him in many sci-fi roles on Star Trek, Battlestar Galactica, and Stargate SG-1. He's also in Duplicity, the new Julia Roberts movie. Today, actor Rick Worthy <laughs> is here. And later in the show, two of the top-ranked pro beach volleyball players, Angie Akers and Tyra Turner, they're getting ready for the Olympic tryouts. But up first, Rick Worthy. Great to have you here today, Thank Rick. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me here, brother. This means so much to me. Thank you. Well, it's a pleasure. I want you to know I am the world's biggest Battlestar Galactica <laughs> fan. So I love the, I have to admit, the old series in particular. I grew up watching yes. that show yes, 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 and was yes. so disappointed that it didn't last longer. So I was glad they brought it back. I know, man. I, you know what? Um, uh, I am also, I mean, so many of us love that show. So you watched it, too. Oh, God. I mean, it was just, you know. A wonderful, wonderful show, and um, I mean, really, really good television. I love sci-fi, and um, when I was when I first heard about Battlestar Galactica coming on TV, I was like, okay, it's a remake of, of the original Battlestar Galactica. How is it going to be different? And, and I remember driving down Sunset Boulevard and looking up and seeing the billboard, and you just saw um, Edward James almost his face, like his uh, profile, yep. you know, and that beautiful character face he has. And I was like, oh God, this is going to be. Good. Well, I grew up wanting to be a Viper pilot. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my career choices. I, astronaut and Viper How did pilot. How for you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> Actually, we had this guy at Scott Zadita who does this show, like they make dreams come true or something. Yeah, and I yeah. was going to say to him, hey, could you like talk to the people at Sci-Fi and get me to sit in that Viper punk cockpit for Dude, one of the shows um, or something? They wouldn't you know? let me sit in the, in the I wanted or, very badly to sit in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, just in the cockpit just one time. Um, but they didn't. They had it kind of sectioned off on a certain uh, area of the stage. And, um, oh, it looks man. So, so I would have cool. snuck in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In between, in between <laughs> shots, like, psh. They throw me out. Too. Yep. That's a good story. <laughs> But, but, yeah. And you play a Cylon. I love the Cylons. One of the, the, th the most cool things yeah. about that series was the Cylons. The Cylons and, and you, and you yeah. are Simon the Cylon? Simon the evil scientist, mad doctor Cylon. <laughs> but, you know, now I watched that the one episode last yeah. night on, on DVD, uh, and, and, and you got blown away. Six of one? Yes. So you're, you're, you're toast. Uh, for now, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean. But, but there are more of you, is that it? I don't there, know. As, as the show says, there are many copies. And uh, um, um, we actually, my agent and I, we had a discussion. We were like, <laughs> how many different ways did they kill me on Battlestar Galactica? Let's, we should put like to, a gag reel together and put that at the end of my demo tape or something. Does that happen every episode? You get killed every off episode, every time? Every episode, they have offed me some kind of way. I mean, either, either death by machine gun fire or explosion. I think the first time um, Starbucks sticks a... Uh, piece of glass in my neck. Oh, you know, but, but that's yeah. great. It makes it great for the writers because, you know, on some yeah. shows like Dallas or, I don't know, well, you probably remember Dallas. I love but Dallas. When people got yeah. written off or they had problems and then they wanted to bring them back, they had right. an issue. But with you, they exactly. could just keep killing you off and bringing you back. Yeah, and, and, and which is, which basically means, you know, I'm, I always have a job, so. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I hate to say it, but I thought, oh wait, I think he just got written off the series when I saw yeah. that last night. There's, there's, there's more coming up. And, um, at first, I was kind of, um, when I read the script, the first time you see my character was in that episode, um, The Farm, and, and Starbuck is, is, is she, wakes, she gets shot, and she wakes up in this kind of weird Twilight Zone-like hospital, you know, and there's nobody around but her and me, you know, and she's like, what is this place? And I tell her, you know, I'm, I'm a doctor, you've been shot, I've removed the bullet, blah, 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 blah. Well, of course, it's, we find out that uh, I'm a Cylon, and mm -hmm. she finds out, and um, the hospital that she's in is actually a, a farming facility for the reproduction of, of, uh, of Cylon and oh. human babies. Oh, so wow. like a hybrid. Oh, they're mating, huh? Yeah, they're, ma yeah, they're doing this weird <laughs> or, mating. Yeah. 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 Wow. Because, you know, in the original series, what I always thought was so chilling, you know, was just that they were like cold blooded killing machines. Yeah. But in the new one, they've really changed it where they've got every, you know, emotions yeah. or yeah. or an agenda. I mean, whatever. It's exactly. not just the. the there's higher brain capacity there. But do you, think it's, do you think that they are alive or do you think they're programmed? Well, the, the episode I saw last night, they were claiming like they had reached higher intelligence right. or achieved it or went beyond their programming. And right. <laughs> so I don't, so, you know, I... Well, I mean, I, because that is, the, that is the question I think everyone wants to know is like, are they actually, like you and I, we're, we're able to look at our hands and say, I'm alive, but 
are they really alive or are they a programmed response or you know that's kind of been the underlying theme under I think but it was know. also an interesting twist though that they have human form because of yes. course in the original one they were the metal buckets that's right. which you know which actually I thought was kind of cool well, too. I, and I, hey, everyone know. loves those metal buckets yeah, with the, with the kind of, red eye thing and yeah I kind of I wish they'd bring back a few more of those I know they have they bring in the centurions yeah. every once in a while but yeah. I kind of okay because yeah. when they had the hot blonde being messiah <laughs> I thought wait don't you think it's, it's when they have a killing machine it right. looks like a killing <laughs> She, I, I have. I think that the the old ones were scarier. Much scarier. From you know, from that point of view. Yeah. Now, yeah. with the new ones, they have yeah. some of the mechanized ones too. They do. They, they have them, but they use, they use the centurions uh, um, for basically military function and, mm. and their their own you know soldiers. But like the, the 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 thinkers and the leaders are the ones that look like you and me. You know, and and you know. We're do you remember the imperious so leader? I love the imperious. I do. I, I do. <laughs> <laughs> can you do that voice? I don't know. You can probably. <laughs> I don't know if I could. I would. I could. I probably need a shot of like you know, like Hennessy or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here comes one. No. Um, I I I'm such as I grew up um, in the 70s, and and uh, we loved to watch. The Bionic Man, The Bionic Woman, um, uh, Charlie's Angels, uh, Beretta. You know, and then in the 80s. Um, Battlestar came on, which is really, I think, kind of Star, Star Trek or uh, Star Wars, but a television version. I think, right. You know, right. and um, we were so excited, uh, my brother and all the, all of our friends, to watch it. You know, so we made a point to watch it every week. Yeah. But I really, seriously, growing up, though, I spent a lot of time, especially with my telescope in the backyard. But I always <laughs> thought that was, you know, the idea that you could just go off out yeah. there into space somewhere. It's and, fascinating. And that actually would be, yeah. you know, wouldn't it be well? Yeah. Hopefully in our lifetime, maybe we'll see something like that. But you know, I don't know. I, I've uh, often, it's funny you say that, man, because I, I have, I remember even now sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm an adult, but sometimes I wonder, like, maybe I was born in the wrong time because I know. I've always had fantasies of getting in a, in a Viper ship and just taking off and, you know, know. seeing what's out there. You know, Truthfully, I think, I would say, I wish I'd been born like 2,000 years ago or 2,000 yeah. years in the future. In the future. Because I was always fascinated by some of the ancient past yeah. or, again, the future, just the idea that, yeah. you know, eventually be able to travel the universe or... I think it's going to happen, I, you know, and, and uh, you know, maybe we can see something like that in, uh, within the next 50 years or so. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, at least we can watch it on TV and, and go to the movies and, 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 you know... And I think there's, that's why there's that fascination for yeah. people. Yeah. Know, I think a lot yeah. of people feel that way. And, yeah. well, and, and Star Trek, too of course now that is such a I have to admit I'm more of a battle I, I love Star Trek too yeah. but I'm, I especially love Battlestar Galactica oh absolutely but, yeah, yeah. You know. Star Trek is great I mean I remember when I came to LA about 14 almost 15 years ago one of my I think my very first job was Star Trek and it was a video game called the Klingon Warrior which no one nobody bought and no one it, it went nowhere <laughs> but it was fun shooting it we shot it live action like it was a TV show like a one-hour episode and Jonathan Frakes was this before this was like, like new, this is before uh, Voyager and, 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 and Deep Space Nine and you know uh, Enterprise. It was it was a, just a video game that that um, they wanted to create and sell and market. And I got a chance to be a Klingon mm. um, for a good week and you know do the Klingon voice and put the Klingon teeth in and yeah. and, and, and do a sit in the makeup chair for three hours in the morning. Oh, it was crazy, but it was fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean you get to play the Cylon and the Klingon. Yeah. Yeah. And although you look more human as a silent <laughs> actually than the Klingon. <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> it's like which one, you know, which one best fits me. I don't I, I as an actor I just try to whatever one is interesting to me, if I have a choice between picking a job or a character, I try to get the one that's the most challenging and the one that's kind of more that has more depth and different layers. So so which do you prefer being the Klingon or the Cylon? I would have to say on Monday, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, I would love to be a Cylon. And then <laughs> Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, I'd love to be a Klingon. Very diplomatic. Yeah. Though, right? <laughs> I don't want to like upset anybody. Kind of towed the line there yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you know, 50-50. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm sure you've been asked this before, but I'm just curious that when you're, I mean, is that really yes. elaborate makeup when they do that for the Klingon? And a lot. It's unbelievable. I mean, I played the Klingon character a few times, and and um, uh, I remember Lavar Burton was hired me to to do Deep Space Nine for a couple of episodes, mm -hmm. and. He said, "Look, you're going to be in the makeup chair like at 5 a.m. You know, so um, thank God I live about a block from Paramount Studios. Oh, oh. So I was able to go to the studio. Um, and but the only thing about living close <laughs> to the studio is that you think you can get there at the last second. And so I was late a few times. <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll be there in five minutes. Oh, uh, I pull into the studio. It's 10 after my call time. Well, that's kind of appropriate because when I wake up at 5 a.m., I feel like a Klingon. <laughs> I have to go to the studio exactly like, right. and be made to look oh, like one. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Because you're like, you know, I, I can't talk to anybody unless I have my soy latte. So you know." <laughs> But um, yeah, you, you sit down in the makeup chair and, and they, they do an, an incredible makeup job. I mean, it's just your whole face is transformed. And then, but the, the killer part is 
the glue that they stick in right under your eye, and then they put the mask on to secure the, fa the mask onto your face. It's, oh, so it's just like one piece? It's, it's like two pieces. Two it's pieces. like one and then the, the top piece, you know? And then the last part is, is the Klingon teeth, which they actually take a mold oh. of your mouth and then they stick it in your- Klingon yeah, teeth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so is it really uncomfortable or? It, it's very uncomfortable, the teeth are. Yeah. Oh. But then that makes you kind of talk like yeah. Klingon. You <laughs> You're know? kind of pissed off when yeah, you play the you role. Want, like, I want blood wine, <laughs> you know, or blah, you know, you just get this kind of gravelly sound coming out of your voice, you know, it's kind of cool. Yeah. We'll be right back with Rick Worthy. <laughs> And we are back with Rick Worthy today for Battlestar Galactica and Star Trek. Mm -hmm. So now where does, where is Battlestar Galactica at the moment? The, the, the series is off, but they're planning yeah, another it one? it is, man. They, it, the series is over. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we had a nice, beautiful rap party up in, it's, the series shoots in, in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. So oh, oh. they had a really nice rap party um, at some restaurant club up there. And, and uh, we all said goodbye to each other. I'm getting emotional as I'm talking about it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, so um, the, the, everybody was that close. Yeah, then, that yeah. And even though I, was, I wasn't contracted to be a regular on the show, all of us who were cast as, as the 12 Cylons, um, uh, Lucy Lawless, Dean Stockwell, myself, um, uh, Keith Callum Rennie, uh, we, you know, we all developed some kind of bond, you know, hmm. and because we, we, knew who, we knew we were all Cylons, playing Cylons, and we kind of just, over the, over the years, and over so many episodes, you kind of get close. It's like family, like on your show, I'm sure you You're have a Cylon family. family. You have a Cylon family, <laughs> yes. I can completely relate to <laughs> exactly. that, you know? And I'm the doctor in the family, so the evil doctor in the family. Do you have your Klingon family, too? I have my Klingon family. Um, this is a very small group of us, but we know who we are, and uh, every now and then. The holidays must be very complicated. The holidays are very complicated. You're trying to figure out, who do I spend time with? Is it them, or is it them, you know? So, but, um, the yeah. aliens or the humans? The aliens right? or the humans, you know? Um, and uh, it, it was it was it was fun, man. We um, finished the show, and and um, I remember I was there for the last day of shooting. So you know it was, mm. it was pretty intense. Yeah. And but what? But they're planning another series or spin well, off or something. Well, from or? what I understand, Eric Stoltz um, and Isai Morales are going to be doing Caprica, which mm. is kind of the prequel to Battlestar Galactica. Mm. And it, it goes from what I understand. I think Isai Morales plays Captain Adama's father. Um, it, it, this happens much, many, many, many years prior to the Battlestar saga that we know. So it's the beginning of the beginning, you know, and the first inkling of a Cylon you see, I think, in this, in this show, you know, like the idea of what that, what that means and who, how we can create like another life, you know. Mm. It's pretty intense. I, 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 caught, I saw a little bit of it and the I was like, of the I'm getting chills later. talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, there is also um, a two hour movie of the week um, called Battlestar Galactica, the, the plan, the Cylon, I think it's called The Plan, mm. all about the Cylons. Oh, it's, the, I'll have to watch that. Yeah, it's going to be, I'm, I can guarantee you right now you're going to love it. Yeah, and um, I'm happy to say that they gave me a really nice role in this uh, movie of the week. And um, I have a wife and she doesn't know I'm a Cylon and maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> oh, aha, we just got the secret right here. This is going on YouTube for sure. Oh man, it's going to be intense, yeah. And Edward James almost directed it and... Um, How did you like him as the commander? You know, Lauren oh, Green yeah. was such a... Oh, Lauren is just... Lauren is, you know, such presence. And then Eddie has that too. I mean, like they both, I think, did... Were, I can't even... I wouldn't want to play a favorite because they're, they both commanded that ship so well, you know. And um, when you work with Ed Edward almost, you, you just get better, you know. He forces you to bring your game up to, to A level every time out, you know. And um, some act or some directors you work with, they say, okay, um, d uh, just cry, right? I need you to be emotional on this, you know. Whereas Eddie's like, let's think about the moment before, let's talk about what's, you know, what the scene's about. I mean, he really does take time to try to, you know, get inside your actor thinking, wow. you know? And that, that helps me a lot, you know. Maybe his actor background. Yeah, I think, I think so, yeah. And, um, and he's, he's just a fun dude to hang around, you know, he's hilarious. And he always has his family, his daughters and his son around with him. Oh, he's oh. a nice, nice guy, really nice guy. Yeah. So you're looking forward to the Star Trek movie? Man, I am. I, I, um, I saw the trailer yesterday when I went to see, um, I went to see, uh, not, oh, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. 
Um, Must not have been a very good movie. I know, I know. Which is just what I saw. It. Well, I've seen Duplicity five times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll talk about that in a second. We'll talk about Duplicity in a second. Um, I went to the movies. I went to the Arclight yesterday. I saw a very memorable movie. And saw some movie that I can't remember the name. You know, it's scary how often I walk out of the theater you know and do I mean? the same thing. Yeah, but it's like it's, I'm, I'm totally drawing a blank right now. Um, anyway, so they had a trailer for the film, <laughs> and um, it was for Star Trek, and it looks great. It just looks really, really good. I love J.J. Abrams' work, and um, even when he did Alias and, and Felicity, which I've been on. Um, when, when I said, well, they, they're going to do another Star Trek film, I, I, I wonder what can they do next with it, because yeah. they've already done 10 or 12 It, it really looks like, if this is the hit that I think it will be, it's really going to breathe a whole new life into this. Because like yeah. you said, you kind of thought maybe it was toward the end of the run or what they'd done everything they could. Yeah. But this yeah. looks like they could it's just... Like a whole different you know, thing on it and a different take. The special effects look great, and I love, I love that stuff. You know? The stunts and all that, and uh, so and now is a lot of it when you're CGI these days when you're doing this. A stuff lot of it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, are you in front of a green screen a lot yeah, of the time, or? Yeah, I mean, like if this was a green screen, like I, be stand, we did this one thing in the uh, movie of the week uh, that's coming out later uh, this summer, and um, I'm standing in front of the green screen, and I'm supposed to be basically jettisoned out into space, and I die. Oh, you know. So um, another way they killed me: <laughs> <in the show. laughs> machine gun fire, stabbing, and then we jettison jettisoned him into, into space, space, and he so freezes was... to death. Yeah. So and all it is is you basically it's all in your head. You, I mean, you play it as if you're seeing it, and you, you just know. have to relate to that time you were exactly. jettisoned out into space, yeah, and then you, you got know, it. Yeah, last year. So <laughs> <laughs> I just recall that and then play that. Isn't you know? TV great the way you're in the movies? The way you can redo it's that fantastic. stuff. It's fantastic. I love it. You know, you just you just think about what what did I do last time? You know, but um, yeah, it's going to be cool. And of course, I have to mention. To duplicity, which I just saw. I love Julia Roberts, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. so what was that like working with her and Clive Owen? You know what? Um, I, I was so excited to to work with with um, with Julia Roberts and Clive Owen, um, and I particularly was very excited to work with uh, Tony Gilroy, who directed and wrote the film, because mm. I, I saw Michael Clayton probably five times before. Uh, this audition came up for Duplicity. So I, I, I remember when uh, I auditioned for Duplicity here, but Tony lives in New York, and then um, they sent him my audition uh, videotape, and then he called me uh, and said, hey, um, I just saw your tape. Nice work. You want to come to New York for a couple of months? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you don't know, you know, you know, have to twist my arm. It in, yeah, 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 yeah. And um, so it was, it was great. And um, I flew out uh, in very cold March day of last year. And Welcome to New York. Oh, God, it was freezing. We were shooting it. My first day of working was in Brooklyn. And, and um, I met Clive. And he's just the nicest guy. In the world. He's so friendly and so mm. sweet and so unassuming. And then Julia Roberts I met about a week later um, because we were all shooting different you know, times. And then um, she walks right up to you, looks you right in the eye, and says, hi, I'm Julia. Nice to meet you. Know? And she's very, very genuine. I like that. You know? She always walks with, um, I have to say, she always is, walks with a bodyguard everywhere, oh. even on the sound, inside the, the studio, you know, in the soundstage. Um, and uh, I assume she's probably had perhaps threats or something, I don't know. But it's a nice person, and he's a very nice guy. You know, he's been with her for many years, but she's great, she's great. And um, a, a very, very, very good actor. I mean, they, they come to work ready. Real know? pro. Real pro. Sometimes you work with people and they don't even know what, uh, okay, they, uh, what are we doing today, you know? Mm. And I'm not naming You names. want to tell, I was just gonna say, yeah, I'm not gonna tell, say. Me, <laughs> tell me who. <laughs> this is getting good, we're getting the good stuff right here at the end. <laughs> um, but uh, they, she and Clive came, you know, ready to just get busy, you know, and that's that's how I like to work too, you know, just I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready, focused. You know. That movie had so many twists and turns. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's unreal, yeah. Especially the end, like, no, I don't think anyone sees that coming, you know. So, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, guess I, I guess I shouldn't, uh, I won't spoil it, but, uh, well, thank you very much, Rick Worthy. Looking forward oh, to seeing you. you in the next Battlestar and Star Trek thank and you. Star Wars or whatever the heck you're what, up to. Whatever they need me for, I'm there, man. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, up next, Pro Beach Volleyball players Angie Akers and Tyra Turner. We'll be right back. And we are back, and joining me now are Pro Beach Volleyball players Angie Akers and Tyra Turner. Great to have you here today, Angie. Thanks for having us. Tyra. Thank you. Okay, so you get paid to play beach volleyball, is that <laughs> it? <laughs> well, it's you know it's a it's a tournament and there's a prize purse, so you do have to win. Okay, you know, so you, you do have, have to win, to win okay. some matches to get paid, so it's it's competitive. <laughs> well, I guess it's a very California kind of thing, but uh, it sounds pretty cool though uh, to be working on the beach. Yeah, the lifestyle is fantastic. I grew up in Indiana, so um, I didn't grow up watching beach volleyball. I really knew nothing about it, and 
I can tell you, I'm definitely, it's a dream. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great, it's a lot of fun, and you, know, you can't beat your office being beautiful beaches around the world. Well, and I know, and you had a corporate background too, so you know yeah. the difference between being at the, yes. the office versus the beach. <laughs> yeah, I haven't gone there yet, I'm terrified. <laughs> Don't do it. I'm <laughs> terrified. Never stay outdoors. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, and that's why I'm wearing the visor every day, and then my sunglasses, trying to protect my skin and keep it attached uh, to my body for a that. while. It's but the it's just the exposure, but other than that. It's difficult, uh, you know, it's difficult and it's scary. But so you have to wear like a hundred sunblock, or what do you do? We'll reapply yeah. every 10 minutes, every 10 minutes <laughs> yeah like with the thickest stuff possible mm -hmm. I mean I figure if I clog my pores I'm doing good do players so. get like skin cancer and stuff this is getting depressing already yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, there definitely there have been some players yeah. that have had to have um, melanoma removed and and it's definitely scary so you got to be careful protecting yourself wearing long sleeves I try and wear long sleeves to practice every day, and then so just it limits the. Um, Have like a ski mask on one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite the that, ski mask. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to see. With <laughs> I think this morning we made it till about ten, about ten, and then I started shedding layers. I was like, I oh. can't do it anymore. I have to get down in my swimsuit. But oh, and do you try to practice at times of the day when it's not as intense then? Or? Oh, for sure. Yeah, we normally we're the early birds, so we kind of start between eight and eight thirty, and we try and get off the beach by eleven, you know, so we can kind of beat the hottest part of the day. But you know, some days you gotta train it when it's hot. It's a tough life. I know. It's rough. <laughs> a hot day at the beach. Boy, it's, a, it's getting it's bad rough. out there. But you guys are getting ready for your starting your Olympic trial process. Now, how does this work? I know it's a long process building up to that. It is. It's like a four-year yeah. sprint. Four so, years. yeah, we're getting ready for 2012, and it comes really fast. So mm -hmm. we'll start competing and traveling internationally, and we'll do the AVP tour, our domestic tour, and the FIVB tour. That's and international. Yeah, and we'll play against every other country, and we'll try to earn one of the two spots that are available, and we're one of the four teams that are qualifying. And how are you guys are ranked pretty highly, like they tell me. Yeah. Yeah, on the AVP <laughs> Tour, we're the fourth ranked team. We just had our first tournament at, in Panama City a couple weeks ago, oh. and we finished third place there. We lost to the, the team who won the whole tournament, the, the number one seeds. Um, and they also represented the U.S. at the Beijing Olympics. Oh, oh. So yeah. they will be one of our biggest competition. Um, but and, and the U.S. is one of the most dominant. Absolutely. It definitely is, yeah. And in fact, so they kind of limit it so that a few countries are Yeah, don't. they have to because uh, in beach volleyball, the USA, Brazil, China, they're some of the most stacked countries in the world. Yeah. And if they don't limit the, um, the number of teams that can compete from those countries, then the whole field would be filled with teams from those countries. So in order to make the it American fair, they, so. <laughs> yeah. Well, just yeah. this last quadrennial, we had um, four teams from the United States. Our four teams were ranked in the top seven. Oh. So for yeah. the Olympics. So we actually qualified. It's just that we, two teams were bumped out because of the country quota. So we had four teams in the top seven. So what kind of training do you do then to get, to get in shape for something <laughs> like that? How do you we do a lot of different stuff. Um, I would say it's a full year process because you, beach volleyball is so much aerobic and anaerobic. You got to be in shape to last all day long, three mm -hmm. days in a row, and yet you got to be able to go as hard as you can for 20 seconds and then have you know a 15 second recovery. So um, I like to take like December and January and do a lot of cardio stuff, just build up my cardiovascular fitness, and you know be ready to to last all day. Um, and then because you're playing, I mean, you are playing all yeah, day. We'll, we'll yeah, we'll start at 9 a.m. and we won't finish sometimes until 6 p.m. So you, you might play five matches in one day and you got to be in shape enough to, to be able to be just as strong in that last match as you were in your first. Because some yeah. people might think, oh, they're playing volleyball on the beach, but you're like out there all day. And yeah, 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 and that very sand, physical. That, that adds a whole new dimension, yeah. moving in the sand. And I think Angie and I also are really conscious about our diet and what we put in our body mm. because when you're competing out there with elements like wind and sun um, and just moving in the sand, it takes a little bit extra and you have to know and be very conscious of what you're putting in your body uh, throughout the whole day to sustain your energy. 
you know, and, and heat and wind does different things to different people. Mm -hmm. So that's a process in itself to learn over the years, you know, what you can eat, what you can actually digest. Some people can't eat when it's 95 degrees out and they're sweating to mm -hmm. death. You know, they have problems taking mean. food in. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really difficult. So you, you really have to work through it. And it takes a couple of years to figure out what works with your body and what doesn't. So could you give us an, an example of what works for you? What kind of well, you know, the, the funny thing that comes to mind is what doesn't work for me. And <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's really like I can't do lunch meats like throughout oh. the day because my stomach, it just can't digest it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I really concentrate on staying hydrated. Um, and I'm good with peanut butter and small snacks, th small snacks throughout the day, but nothing really big. You know, so fruits and bananas and, you know, small things. And what about you? Do you have a... Well, I'm, I have a reputation for being very picky, and oh. it's because I have food allergies, oh, so I'm, I'm very conscious of what I can and can't eat. I, um, I'm allergic to wheat, mm -hmm. and so that makes it really difficult because it cuts out bread, and, and I used to try and, and have like peanut butter sandwiches or something like that, and I can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm allergic to wheat, and I'm allergic to dairy. Oh. Um, so I stick with um, like bananas, oranges. Mm -hmm. um, I. One of my sponsors is Fubar, a company named Fubar, oh. who makes an, an all-organic um, food bar, and it's real food. So um, those work really well for me. They're gluten-free, and um, and I just have little snacks like that, like whole foods, like almonds and uh, and yeah. nuts and and things like that that are good sources of energy, but are easy to digest. And normally, both of us just water. Yeah. You know, we can't, it's really hard when you start, a lot of other supplements have sugars and stuff in the water, and when you don't have a lot of food in your system, and you're out in the sun, and then you throw in a drink that has a lot of sugar in it, it doesn't work. Oh. The belly. Now, do you do much with weights and that kind of thing, or? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the bodybuilder? Uh, oh, yes, we get that. <laughs> um, we work at Level 10 in Manhattan Beach. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great little private gym, and our trainer does a lot of kettlebell work with us, oh, uh -huh. which is kind of a new, um, it's a great workout. There are people uh, who are just crazy about those kettlebells. Yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah. She's, I'm it's not crazy great about them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love them, but they kick my butt, but they're good. Yeah. It's a great way to work explosion into in your, in our workouts, and that's kind of what we need. Because we both, we're, we're dealing with some injuries, so we don't, we can't yeah. do the heavy lifting, like the, all the Olympic lifts. and. Um, because we got banged up knees or shoulders or whatnot, so we got to. Yeah, you've had. Some yeah, pretty we bad have injuries. to. We have to kind of monitor what we're doing and making sure that what we do in the gym complements what we do on the beach and isn't contradicting anything in any yeah. way. And I think most professional yeah. athletes are are dealing with injuries, or it, it's not even injuries for us. It's just it's body maintenance. You know, mm -hmm. it's like continuing education, and that's what our therapy is. You know, we're continuously doing therapy each each and every day just to keep our bodies working the best that they should. Um, and it's maintenance and it's what we have to do. So we're pretty used to it. Well, one of the cool things about this is really this sport has taken you all over the world. Yeah, oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah, that's definitely a, a big perk to playing. Um, the unfortunate thing is you, when you travel, <laughs> you don't want to have the opportunity to sightsee because that means you've been kicked out of the tournament early. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so sightseeing so. is not a good thing about that. No, it's yes. not. No. So we want to go to these places and not be able to see a thing. That's yeah. <laughs> Well, we're almost out of time, but I do want to mention you've also been doing some stuff with the military, um, traveling to see the troops. And yes, the past couple of years I've had the opportunity to visit Kosovo, Germany, Italy, and even Fort Bragg here in the United States. Um, and basically it's a morale boosting trip and um, a way to say thank you to the men and women who serve our country and do so much for us. Um, it kind of was a neat little way for me to, to realize that, wow, I can have this impact on people who do so much for us, and sure. I never knew a way to, to thank them, and this is kind of a way to do it. Well, thank you both very much, Angie oh, Akers and nice. Tyra Turner. Thank Best you. of luck. Hope to see you at London in 20, or, yeah, 2012. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks.